Hi everyone, today I'm talking about uh, the Kingsbury Pond. We're actually going to be uh, giving acknowledgement to the many ponds that are here in Medfield for the purpose of swimming. And this is done through Medfield TV. And back in the late 50s, Kingsbury's Pond here in back of me was used as the public swim pond uh, here in Medfield. There was no other place uh, where anyone could go swimming at a public beach here in the town of Medfield. And the land here was owned by Mrs. Blanche Kingsbury. The pond was on loan, so to speak. And she liked the idea of having the swim pond here for uh, the public and for all the kids and their parents. And there is practically nothing left from the beach which was one, one time right here. And it stayed actually a sandy beach right up until uh, the, the mid 80s. And finally, all these trees and the shrubbery you see behind me uh, finally took root. And now this is what is now going on here at, at Kingsbridge Pond. Now, the kids, they used to be able to swim out about uh, 10 yards out to where you see the lily pads. And there was a safety rope put there, held up by corks. That was meant mainly for the children who did not know how to swim yet. And somewhere out, 40 yards out in that direction, we had a uh, great raft with a diving board. And uh, if you were able to swim out to it, and you were a good swimmer, you could actually go out there and hang out on the raft and also uh, go out and use the uh, diving board, which was an awful lot of fun for, the, for everyone. Some of the parents would pretty much stay here on what used to be the beach area, and they would come down here to, uh, what they would do is they'd sun themselves on a blanket and keep a watchful eye on their children as they went swimming. Now, they used to have swim lessons here, and then if you wanted to uh, qualify for the Red Cross saving, uh, one of the requirements was to swim around the entire island uh, at least 12, uh, two times, two different times. And uh, back if you head that way, where there really wasn't any beach, we had, you know, kids would go swimming. And uh, mostly though, they would go and do some fishing. And, uh, you know, you could really get uh, quite a few fish that were a pickerel, they were a hornpout, better known as catfish. And um, there were also a few, but not very often, you'd, you'd see a water moccasin over there. Now, to my right, they also had a wharf uh, where a waterfall was going to the grist mill. And what kids used to do, they'd go over there and they'd dive into the water. Of course, those kids were very, very good swimmers. So uh, they pretty much knew what they were doing. And uh, the pond here actually was only used for three, three uh, years, three different seasons. And what happened is uh, one afternoon, there were a couple of kids who walked across the street and Blanche Pink Kingsbury had her antique store. And what those two kids did is they, they uh, vandalized some of the property and they broke uh, many of the great stained glass windows that uh, Blanche Kingsbury had there. So once she saw that, she ended what was Kingsbury's Pond and the beach. And consequently, that ruined it for everyone and midfield the public could no longer uh, use this pond uh, to swim in we had to like look for some other way of allowing kids to swim and be in swim meets hi once again we're out here looking at some of the uh in ground or maybe even above ground pools that have, were very popular here in Medfield. And right in back of me was 
actually what they call the foundation swimming pool, which was right on the property uh, of Rebel Palumbo, who was a resident here uh, back into the late 90s. And his home, his homestead where his mom and dad lived when they came over from Italy was right to my right. The building is at 51 Ferrari Street. So what Rebel wanted to do was build a house right in the corner of that area. And there were hardly any trees back there. He built a foundation, which was supposed to be used as a swimming pool for the neighborhood kids, because he thought that once the foundation was built, it was too far back. It was at least 150 yards back from Ferrari Street here. And of course, right what I'm looking into now is uh, a big apartment complex. So kids would, uh, actually anybody who really wanted to cool off in the summer could come down here and swim in what used to, they used to call the basement swimming pool. And fresh water was uh, piped into it. It uh, had a filter, which would do a very good job of keeping the water clean in addition to the chlorine. And uh, it, was, it was a very nice attraction. You know, you'd have kids not just from Ferrari Street, but you'd come from other, kids were coming from other parts of Medfield. And it was uh, very, very refreshing because we had a lot of, we had a lot of heat back then in the very, very late 50s. And that's when this foundation swimming pool was, was built. And uh, not only was it hot, I mean, it was uh, oppressively hot at times. And, uh, you know, it was in a very nice location. And there were just so many kids who wanted to swim in the uh, pool. There were many adults as well. They really uh, flocked down here to go swimming. And it was the typical uh, foundation made from cement. And uh, what had happened is being open in the late 50s, it ran all the way into the early 70s with all many, many young children coming here and being able to swim. Uh, right now we're down on West Street here in Medfield and uh, I wanted to show you what, how progress finally took place in the town after many years. But on this golf green area here, that nice green lawn used to be an in-ground swimming pool and you could dive down about seven to eight feet and where it was constantly exposed to the sunlight, it uh, really was very comfortable, very, very warm in that water. And this is the property of Vincent Palumbo. And many people here in Medfield, you might be familiar with uh, Palumbo, uh, Palumbo Liquors, which is right up near the CVS in, uh, near the downtown of Medfield. And it used to be an awful lot of fun. You could come down here. They also had a, to the right here, they had a trampoline that the kids could go up and jump up and down and have a real blast. Uh, however, you know, this is just one small example of, uh, this was private. This was a private swimming pond, uh, excuse me, swimming uh, pool. And it was also surrounded uh, for safety purposes. It was surrounded by a fence that went all the way around it. And uh, what happened is basically when Vin Palumbo and Muriel's children, they got older, they no longer were using it as much as they used to. And they graduated from high school, went to college. So uh, what Vin Palumbo, being an avid golfer, he uh, transformed it into a small golf green where you'd practice um, the putting with his golf club, the balls, and also the sons would use it for that very purpose also. And uh, boy, you couldn't ask for a nicer spot to be swimming. Um, it was really used exclusively for his family and any of his 
uh, relatives or friends of uh, his three children. Well, here we are over at the farm pond over here in Sherbet, Mass. And behind me is the pond over here. And uh, it has been running uh, ever since the pilgrims came over here. They uh, would settle over here. And they, well, the pond is, itself is really what they refer to as a kettle lake, meaning it was formed by the melting remnants of one of the glaciers that departed from New England 12,000 years ago. The pond is about 58 feet at its steepest, and it covers 124 acres. Uh, usually on a very hot summer day, the, the place is very crowded, but um, uh, it's still very early in the day. Uh, people have all, all afternoon to try and, and get over here for a swim for themselves. Um, a local f f folklore claims that Farm Pond is f spring fed, but it has been shown that there are pockets of cold water which swimmers often feel, and the result of thermal stratification of water levels due to the water density differences. It's estimated that 80 million gallons of water per year flow out of Farm Pond or are lost due to evaporation, resulting in a dependence on about 40 to 50 inches of annual rainfall to maintain the pond's normal level. Farm Pond has always been a very active wildlife area, providing habitat to fish and birds, including geese, that have sometimes proven to be uh, problematic, blue herons, eagles, and hawks. The name Farm Pond may come from the early <laughs> colonial era, when land grants were given out as payment for favors done for crown for the colony. Farm was the name for a grant outside of incorporated towns. The land around Farm Pond was part of Simon Bradstreet's quote farm, which he told and sold them to the Morse family in 1658. It was soon declared that Farm Pond and others like it were quote great ponds, and others like it were uh, regular everyday run of the pond and all, set, all the set, settlers had the right to fish in them. In the 19th century, Farm Pond provided fish as well as recreational swimming and skating to Sherbin residents. It was stocked with fish several times in the 1870s. By then, ice harvesting was an important Sherbin industry. Several ice houses were located on the shore near Lake Street. The foundation of one can still be seen there. The Clark family, among others, harvested as much as 3,000 tons of ice in a good year, storing the chunks in sawdust insulated barns packed in meadow marsh, hay, and sawdust. As much as a third of the ice would melt before it could be sold at 30 cents per pound. A 50 or 100 pound chunk could last in an ice box as long as a week. From 1897 to 1935, only fishing and harvesting was allowed on Farm Pond. The Commonwealth of Mass took control of the water rights so that the pond could be used as a reservoir for Medfield State Hospital. Water was taken to the hospital from the brick pump house on the eastern side of the pond, but it was used only for the hospital's boilers. Water continued to be drawn from the, from the pond until the hospital was closed back in 2003. In 1935, the Commonwealth of Mass authorized the Sherbin Board of Selectmen to administer Farm Pond to establish rules and regulations for its use and protection. In 2010, an act of the legislature transferred the Farm Pond 
water rights back to the town of Sherbet. Swimming is permitted year-round. The beach is patrolled by lifeguards from early June until late August. Swimming lessons are run by the Red Cross qualified instructors who teach at a variety of levels. A town-sponsored team, swim team, conducts swimming meets during the summer for Sherbin and Dover youth. The Sherbin Yacht Club is the center of all the, the boating activities. The sand sculpture contest gives families and groups of children and adults an opportunity to demonstrate their skills and imagination at fantastic sand sculptures. They also have a program for little children. Uh, it's called Penny a Day. It gives children an opportunity to earn a bit of pocket change while removing rocks from the swimming area and the beach. The annual 4th of July events at the beach include water games, scavenger hunts, swim races, and other fun activities for all ages. Skating, ice hockey, and ice fishing are favorite winter activities here. The Friends of Farm Pond is a community organization dedicated to the enjoyment of Farm Pond. They help to coordinate the previously mentioned pond activities, the lap swim, and the Admiral Fun Below Perimeter Swim. They are also an advocacy group for the preservation of this beautiful pond. The advisory committee help, helps to control mitigating geese impact and inspecting boats to minimize the threat of aquatic weed transfer. The plant pollution called Eurasian water milfoil, which is an aquatic weed, is set hazardous to some of the ponds here in New England. But Farm Pond maintains a constant vigil in keeping this infestation of the waters here at the pond. Personally, I can remember that when uh, I was very young, my father would bring uh, my mother and my brothers and my sisters over here to do some swimming. It's the, uh, it's practically one of the very, very few freshwater, uh, beautiful ponds. If, uh, when I was young, I know I had a very uh, great interest in putting on goggles which covered my eyes and my nose and I would dive right down to the very bottom of, of the uh, sand and uh, it offered a great panoramic view of the fish and any other forms of life that were out there. Uh, it's a great place. I had not actually been back to here to Farm Pond since 1975 and I can tell you that the pond uh, looks better than ever. It has they're still accommodating the public and it's an extremely well taken care of and well uh, disciplined beach. There's not enough good you could possibly say about Farm Pond. It's just all good. Hi, right now we're up on uh, at the Medfields uh, Stephen Hinckley Swim Pond, and it was actually uh, first opened back in 1963. Up until then, uh, Medfield really didn't have a public swimming facility. Uh, at one time, there were, uh, there was definitely a beach, and there was swimming down at the Kingsbury's Pond, which is about uh, a mile and a half out of uh, the center of Medfield. And things were going really well there in the summers. It was open for three years, but Blanche Kingsbury, who was the owner of the pond and all the property, also had a antique store. And what happened, uh, unfortunately, is two younger kids went over there and they started breaking the stained glass windows. So after they br broke all the uh, stained glass windows, um, Blanche Kingsbury was so upset that she closed down the pond and would not let the town of Medfield ever use it again. 
But Kingsbury's Pond uh, would train uh, many uh, swimmers in uh, being a lifeguard and working with an emergency team. Uh, so that is why uh, something like the Stephen Hinckley Pond here was necessitated. And, uh, you know, it's done quite well. It's been uh, named after uh, Stephen Hinckley, who was a, a resident here of Medfield. Well-known kid, wonderful kid. You could not ask for anyone better. And he joined the Marine Corps in 1967. And what happened is uh, he was a corporal in uh, the Marines and he was stationed in Vietnam. He was also a chaplain assistant. And what happened is he was out with a priest uh, on the battleground and he was distri helping him distribute First Communion. And he was also, the priest was also giving the last rites to many of the men that were terribly injured in uh, fighting with the, against the Vietnamese. Tragically, Stephen was out there with him and a sniper uh, killed Stephen Hinckley. And then that's why they decided to rename the pond here, the Stephen Hinckley Pond. It, of course, uh, it has uh, its limits. It's got its width, it's got its length, and it's really perfect for the swimming people here in Medfield. And then that's why in 1963, the Medfield, uh, town of Medfield decided to break ground and install what is now called, as I said before, Stephen Hinckley Swim Pond. Finally, there was a swim pond in Medfield where residents could kick back and swim in a pond that was filled with natural spring water. For over 50 years now, Medfield residents have cooled off on hot summer days at a natural pond right off Green Street. This pond is perhaps everything that the Kingsbury Pond should have been. There are swimming lessons, a swim team, a beach area, and a snack shack. There are over 200 family memberships and over 100 children take swimming lessons each week in the summer. Here we are at beautiful New Pond, which has been renamed to Willett Pond here in Norwood, Mass. It's right on the grounds of St. Timothy's Catholic Church. It's a beautiful church, and actually the Catholic Church bought up all of what used to be uh, the land around the pond. And uh, at one time, uh, when kids could no longer swim over at Kingsbury's Pond in Medfield, the Park and Recreation Committee over in Medfield, uh, had to end up looking for another pond where some of the kids could go to swim and learn how to swim. So we were very fortunate enough to be able to come down here to New Pond. Of course, it's no longer being used for swimming or boating uh, because of all the land being sold. But it's, uh, it's still a very, very beautiful pond. It's, you know, not like the, what we've known to call Jer the Jersey Shore. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful uh, area and uh, one can actually go out on a boat or they can swim, but uh, it's due to the sign which is off to my right here. There's no swimming and no boating and uh, it is considered to be private property of the Neponset River Land Holding Association. Now when we we're coming here uh, way back in 1960 to learn swimming lessons. Uh, we did have a, a young man named Nathan Nye who was teaching us along with many other adults uh, various swimming, Red Cross swimming. Uh, the thing of it is, is this is a much larger pond than Kingsbury Pond and what happened when we would get bussed over here uh, at 8.30, we'd end up getting down to the beach and the swimming lessons would start at 9 a.m. in the morning and the water was cold and cold just simply because it's a much, much bigger uh, pond than what Medfield has. 
what the uh, Kingsbury Pond had. But we seemed to do well with it. It had a very gritty, sandy beach. Uh, it wasn't really uh, as nice as the sand that we had down at Kingsbury's Pond or the pond that they now ha have down at the Stephen Hinckley uh, swim pond. But nevertheless, uh, it was passable. We liked it. We enjoyed it. And uh, we do have some uh, rather fond memories of it. Okay, uh, we're back in Medfield and we're working hard and hardly working. I guess I'm back here at uh, where I grew up when I was no more than 10 years old. In back of me here is the east end of Jules Pond. And it's very picturesque. Uh, right now, probably the scene we're doing really doesn't quite do it justice, but it is still quite beautiful here. And Miss Jewel, uh, who has owned, who owned this pond here since 1902, uh, owned this pond, and then she later, when she passed away, uh, it was taken up by the Kenny family, who called it the Red, the Red Gate Farm, which is further up the way. And I would be over here fishing with my good friend Tommy Sabrowski, and Tommy uh, lived right down at the junction of Nebo and Phillips Street. He lived in that house with his brother Johnny and his father, Addy Sabrowski, who was right from, directly from Russia. And his wife was Elizabeth. We all called her Liz. That woman uh, actually worked in the house down there at the corner and she had to cook all of their meals on a wood stove. And if you've got no air conditioning and you're working in a kitchen uh, where it's already 90 degrees, uh, you can believe it that uh, that kitchen was really hot at times. Uh, way up in back of their house, there were about 200 Rhode Island Reds, uh, egg-laying chickens, and uh, sometimes Addie would prepare one uh, to be eaten later on for supper, and he would also supply uh, that to Miss Jewel as well. They also had four Holstein cows and Jersey cows, and uh, they uh, would be down in the barn, which was a very big red barn. Now it's uh, just got the plain wood on it. It's not at all painted, uh, but it has been stained and it is completely closed up. It's not used anymore. The milk was taken, uh, milk from the cows, and then later homogenized and pasteurized right on uh, the property here. Basically, Tommy and I would do fishing out here on the pond. If we weren't fishing, then we were swimming up at the dock that uh, is right over near Miss Jewel's home. And we were able to catch uh, catfish, which you know we would call hornpout, uh, which were really very good eating. They had to be skinned and, of course, cleaned. And it was a, f a fish that really tasted quite a bit like chicken and it was delicious. Uh, there were some beautiful sun turtles, which actually we just saw here. Uh, as soon as they realized that we were nearby, they jumped right back into the water and they did a, a great escape. We couldn't even film them. Oh. <laughs> I just lost my script, but I'm gonna do it without it anyway. Uh, Tommy was also a very good a uh, pitcher in the Medfield Little League, and he pitched for the Indian team. And uh, he was so well known among all the townspeople, uh, and he was very much appreciated by all his teammates, who uh, at that particular point in time were all invited to go swimming up at the far end over there. And we'd have a great time, we'd have a barbecue afterwards. This is not, however, this is not a public swimming pool but, or, or pond. Uh, it is private, it was never public, but uh, Tommy Sabrowski did a great job at inviting his friends over and they were all very grateful. Uh, swimming, we did a lot of swimming and we did a lot of fishing and uh, 
The, the only problem that the uh, Jules Pond now has is it's loaded with uh, leeches, bloodsuckers, and it's uh, supposedly, we haven't seen any yet today, but supposedly it's got a lot of snapping turtles. And uh, those are some very, very serious hombres that you don't want to fool around with. You don't want to be on the receiving end of that bite. Medfield TV, Community Shows.